Okay, here we have a second to last uh, section in this um, uh, unit on uh, AI for health and medicine. This comes from a work of a colleague of mine, Shantanu Jha, and uh, collaborators at Argonne National Lab, such as Rick Stevens. And it is using high performance computing to screen drug candidates. It has the lessons you'll learn here are applicable to many other projects, which we even uh, summarized some of them in earlier, in earlier slides. This is a very important area. And it has multiple facets, which are not fully described here. Okay, let's go. Section H, screening COVID-19 drug candidates. So, there was a time I remember, um, Ten years ago, when drug companies were very depressed, they were making no progress. They were, but they were also not using AI. I think nowadays, um, the drug discovery process is much more promising. People have developed these new techniques, which are just far more efficient than previous techniques, but totally brute force. And if we look at the, there are sort of um, at least two types of usages of AI and drug discovery. One takes a molecule. It looks at the properties of the molecule, maybe there are 10 properties. Then it builds a deep learning network, mapping that into, um, into the behavior of this molecule in various functions, such as drugs. So this is a standalone deep learning network. That's um, mapping molecular structure into drug properties, or molecular properties into drug properties. Then we have, uh, this has also been uh, very, very important for manufacturing, because you can do the same thing with materials. You can decide whether a particular material built out of the following atomic structure will or will not be a high quality material by using these types of networks. And there are lots of papers in this area, and I've written review articles which give more detail on them. Then there is um, perhaps a more interesting, because it's sort of somewhat newer, is to use the AI to control a, a high performance computing simulation and make that simulation more efficient. That is still being developed and uh, We'll have more, there's more of that than this in what follows. So this is a Chantanu Jars project with DOE. I have no significant involvement with it. And um, it's addressing the fact that there's lots of possible drugs and we need to enhance the performance of the simulations. The simulations are just running on these giant DOE supercomputers. And they also have to do a lot of hyperparameter searches. I think I remarked, if you compare universities with industry and DOE, industry and DOE do much better because they have, they have the infrastructure to allow hyperparameter searches. Um, and we want to um, predict therapeutic effectiveness, and we want to determine which drug candidates to actually pick out of the possible ones to simulate. And um, here is the example of this deep line to map um, specification of a, of a possible drug, or, which is a chemical, a small molecule chemical, into its um, therapeutic effectiveness. Here's effectiveness, here is structural properties, and you just learn this network. And you can train this network either on the, um, experimental observations or on simulations. And this is, these are, when you do it with simulations, they're called surrogates, because this is a surrogate for the simulation. It allows you to capture what you wanted out of the simulation without doing it. And here is the um, actual, I, I must admit I'm not terribly competent to comment on these slides. I don't quite know what kinase inhibitor resistance is. And uh, I know what mutations are, and certainly the fact that there are a large number of mutations makes it a complicated problem. Here we have the, presumably the protein database, and um, we are automating uh, a tr the model to try to see which ones are promising models, which we feed in 
to our molecular dynamic simulation. These have produced trajectories as they move, as, as you do the simulation, the um, proteins uh, move through phase space and you, you uh, find some clustering of these things to find out where interesting things are happening, which you feed in here to get novel states. Over here, we're doing some um, molecular docking. We're taking the small molecules, letting them uh, hit the uh, virus with its spike and see if they gobble up the spike and destroy the virus. And then you get candidates on that, which are fed and also to this process. And then at the end, you get a list of potential drugs. So this is uh, called Deep Drive MD, Deep Learning Driven Adaptive Ensemble. The ensemble means, uh, ensemble means collection. So this is a collection of simulations. This is a relatively recent development of, um, ensembles have always been used, but they've been used in a rather I mean, a rather bad reputation because they just run over everything. Whereas these are in sort of AI-driven ensembles. They're, they're, they're a much more intelligent search space. So they're making the search over space much better. And they use these so-called convolutional variational autoencoders, which are a good way of getting low dimension representation. So if you have lots and lots of um, atoms and you're trying to evolve them in time. I don't know whether how many atoms are, 100,000 or a million. Well, that's um, each of them has three positions and three velocities, so that's uh, six million degrees of freedom. Well, that's a lot of degrees of freedom to explore. Well, you can um, effectively learn what's called collective coordinates, which are low-dimension representations. And this is basically dimension reduction for simulations, and. Uh, you can actually learn features which are, can go be transferred across simulations. And you can identify from this which region of the phase space actually has interesting molecules, and you can bias your simulations to go into that area. Like they were, they, <clears throat> independent of this, they were looking at protein folding, and they look at the phase space of the simulations where proteins are likely to fold. And all of this runs on these giant supercomputers, running lots and lots of jobs controlled by these autoencoders. And here is a more detailed um, picture. Candle is this giant argon project in um, working in this area. And here they see they use TensorFlow. Um, and they do hyperparameter over here. So they just run over lots and lots of possible hyperparameters. We know hyperparameters are critical. At the moment, what you have to do is to specify the general structure of the um, deep learning network, and then you can choose the number of layers, the number of units in each layer, um, amount of the dropout, and also what all these things which um, determine the effectiveness of the final answer, the number of time steps to use in the time series version. And <coughs> You then take your simulation to you actually terminate early ones which don't look promising, which don't fit with your phase space model, and you continue um, well placed trajectories, uh, simulations, and you also generate new simulations with the uh, um, built around the states which are uh, believed to be promising. You do that with the inference phase, which is where the CVA, the convolutional network, will predict what the right things to look at are. All right, so here is actually a sort of examples. Anton is a very famous specialized computer built by D.E. Shaw, who made uh, billions of dollars in the stock market. He's a computer science at, uh, scientist, I think, at New York. University, and uh, he actually worked in the same field as I did uh, in the 80s, but he was successful and I wasn't. And uh, he built Anton, even using one of my best students on his on his team. And Anton is the uh, orange, and so it's how it's moving through phase space. This is for this uh, VHP uh, protein. Here's BBA. I'm not quite certain what they are. 
And here you can see actually the deep drive MD is exploring the population very badly. That's because it's learning. Once it's learned, it really sprints up and uh, comes on the head of um, Anton. In some cases, it appears to do um, just better from the beginning. I'm not quite certain why that is. Maybe it's already pre-trained. Uh, here is an example where for BBA, where it has a clear training uh, component. So, but in all cases, the blue curve is more rapidly varying with time, which means it's more rapidly understanding the phase space than, and because there's a non trivial factor to get to the same um, degree of um, validity, uh, Anton has to um, run factor of 10 to the 100 longer time. Here's a pretty picture of, uh, of this uh, nasty virus. And they're doing these three different uh, things, which uh, these particular words will occur on the following slides. Um, of this virtual screening pipeline to uh, identify drugs, which are by definition small molecules. Um, we're identifying, um, and that's by because they bind well. And uh, we have uh, physics-based models which identify which small molecules to, to look at. And we have the detailed um, modeling of actually the binding and uh, how the drugs and viruses interact with each other. And uh, here is this virtual screening. You have all the data coming in. PubMem, Chem, I'm very familiar with. It just is a set of data on chemicals. And it gives you all the, and then actually this is, that's the type of data. When we had this neural net that went from here to here, PubChem will tell you what to put here. It has all the information about what those chemicals do. I won't discuss these words here, because they're the same as the previous slide. And um, so this is AI-driven docking. Docking is just modeling how the drug and viruses interact. Here we have um, a workflow one, where we're um, finding particular molecules. Um, and this is running on the Argon Leadership Computing Facility, where the machines are named Theta and Cooley. I don't know Cooley, Theta I know, it's quite well known. It's a big, um, nice landing system. And it's using a well-known molecular dynamics code, AMBA. And we finally have um, Workflow two, understanding the detailed interaction between drugs and molecules. And this is running on lots of supercomputers. All of these are. Here's the final slide in this set, which just, uh, these are the software which uh, my friend Shantanu has built. Uh, it's got Radical in front of it, that's the name of his lab at Rutgers. And the whole project, this whole project is called Deep Drive MD. And the Radical software, which was built in a project led by me some years ago, is being used in, in these different ways. There's so-called pilot jobs, and Saga, which is a particular way of implementing pilot jobs. Pilot jobs are where you have a generic job, and you just populate it. And so you try to, you put into the user hands the ability to, to task various, to assign jobs to tasks. And um, currently it's getting you um, factors of up to 1,000 on Summit. And it's expected to get out factors of 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 8 on larger machines. So that's the end of this uh, discussion. Uh, there's, this is a very deep area. There are many, many papers on this which you would need to study to make further progress. In any case, thank you very much.